Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 34 of Quattroporte, the review series for Gran Turismo 6's selection of super saloons, but also some slightly lower end sports saloons. And one of the great things about super saloons, and primarily sports saloons, is that many of them are pretty good sleeper cars. They are a lot faster than they look, and in often cases, a lot faster than people think they are, and a lot more competitive than people think they can be. And this vehicle, I would say, is definitely one of those. It's not as much of a sleeper car as some visually, because it's not necessarily that understated. It does, after all, have quite bright colours as standard, and uh, a pretty large rear wing. But, in terms of what it's capable of, it's a very easy car to underestimate. And that makes it very good for an owner of this car to take advantage of that. Now, it's one of the rarer sports saloons on Gran Turismo, especially from America, to be front-wheel drive. And although that does have some downsides, it does also have some very particular advantages, such as the fact that this car, being front-wheel drive, automatically makes it one of the fastest front-wheel drive cars on Gran Turismo. The top speed on this car is around 230 or more under its own power which is seriously impressive for a front-wheel drive super saloon slash sports saloon. Either way, that would be impressive, but for one with nowhere near the most power and on a front-wheel drive chassis. Most front-wheel drive vehicles of any category, not just sports saloons, tend to be not a strong top end. They have very good mid-range performance, especially acceleration. Off the line, there's a little bit of wheel spin usually, but top end, they're usually hampered by the fact that they're not allowed as much power on Gran Turismo as they really deserve. This car, though, is surprisingly powerful. It's powered by a 2.4 litre turbo engine, and you can actually get that engine to produce a very healthy 560 horsepower, which is roughly the same kind of power that you can get out of an Impreza or an Evo. It also puts out 486 foot-pounds of torque, which is also very impressive. The fact that it only has a front-wheel drive chassis also helps to keep the weight lower than many other sports and super saloons at 1,105 kilos. And thanks to that modest weight, it puts out over 500 horsepower per tonne. And considering that this is most certainly not a super saloon, very firmly fixed in the sports saloon camp, that's a very good power to weight ratio to have for a sports saloon. The PP is reasonably high, not overly high, but reasonably high at 570 in its fully upgraded form, but the price is amazing. This is actually one of the cheapest and also, by definition, one of the best value for money due to how much performance and power that you get for that price, super saloons or sports saloons on Gran Turismo because this car only costs just under 21,000 credits. And not only is that cheaper than most sports and super saloons by far, that's actually cheaper than many hot hatches, let alone saloons. So, is it worth buying? Well, it kind of goes without saying that it is. The top speed is excellent, the acceleration is very good, not necessarily off the line, because as you'd expect from a front-wheel drive car with so much power, it is inclined to torque steer and wheel spin heavily off the line, although that's not a chronic thing. The mid-range acceleration is excellent. Probably the best point about this car, in fact, in terms of its straight-line performance. The top speed is deceptively good. The amount of power that it's given allows it to really achieve some impressive top speeds, and in some cases it can actually outrun vehicles which you would expect to be quicker. It can even outrun some race cars. It's faster for top speed, for instance, than a NASCAR. Even with a top speed biased gear setup and low aero, NASCARs aren't that amazing for top speed. They only do just over 220, around 225-ish under their own power. They can do a lot more with draft, of course, they can even get over 300, but under their own power, on a flat road, they're not as quick as you'd think they would be. And considering how much power a NASCAR, but also other cars in general, have over this Dodge SRT4, or the SRT SRT4 as it's called on the game, it's a really impressive little car that it's as fast as it is. 
What about track potential, though? Because obviously being a good all-round sports or super saloon, just like with any performance car, is about more than just straight-line speed. Well, in some ways, it's good. In some ways, not so much. It's not a bad car in any particular way, but in some ways, it can hamper you a little bit. And it is mainly due to that front-wheel drive chassis. The main advantage of a front-wheel drive chassis apart from that it helps with a low weight in general, but that's not the main advantage. The main advantage is control. You can throw a front-wheel drive car, literally throw it into a corner, and not lose control. You have a phenomenal amount of driver's control, control which, for the most part, you would not get in a rear-wheel drive or, in some cases, even all-wheel drive car. Stability is excellent, by definition, on a front-wheel drive car. And if you think about it, it's very hard to make a front-wheel drive car lose control. You really have to make that car swerve constantly to make the car spin out. And that's an excellent advantage to have, especially on tracks with grass or sand verges that are very easily to catch with one or more of your tyres, which in especially a rear-wheel drive car would make your car almost instantly inclined towards losing control, getting the tail out, possibly even spinning or drifting which of course wastes time. In a front wheel drive car, that rarely happens even if you do clip the grass because you can just get it right back on track and due to the fact that those front wheels are in effect pulling the car whereas a rear wheel drive car is in effect pushing the car a front wheel drive chassis is in effect pulling the car. Now the disadvantage is rampant wheel spin and unfortunately, that is kind of the issue with this car. It really likes to spin up those wheels. But if you're looking for an affordable and very fast sports saloon, definitely check this one out. But that's it overall for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.